fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Get on there! The eastbound stage destined for Mineral Springs was on schedule. Since it was carrying neither cash nor gold, there was no guard riding shotgun. So the only passenger had chosen to sit in the empty place beside the driver. Though the frock the traveler was obviously an Easterner, he was well known in many parts of the West. His name was Horace Greeley. Get on out! Mr. Greeley was keenly interested in the country about him. As he saw the horizon, the celebrated editor said, This is Indian country, isn't it, driver? That's right. Don't worry about it. Chief Wax on his braves have been living in peace for a long time. Are we likely to meet any of them? No. Nope. The Indians keep for themselves, Mr. Greeley. Where do they live? Oh, in the hills to the north. I'd like to meet the Indian chief. I have heard that Chief Waxhaw is a mission educator, Redskin. He... Well, I'll be... What's wrong? Look on the trail ahead. A uh, tree seems to have fallen. Fallen nothing. That timber was cut. Huh? It was chopped down and laid across the trail to block the stage. But why? Yeah, it's a stick-up. If I stop for that tree, we'll meet a couple of outlaws as sure as you're born. But you'll have to stop. Well, maybe not. I might be able to whip the horses around the soft ground beside the trail. Hang on, Mr. Greeley. Very well. Get along there. Ah, ah. The horses turned sharply from the trail. As the wheels of the big Concorde struck the soft ground, the vehicle tipped and overturned. Ah. The startled team of horses stopped in their tracks, caught in a tangle of snarl traces. Blaze and his two companions spurred their mounts and rode from the cottonwood grove where they had been watching. Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley, are you all right? Well, aside from a few superficial cuts, I'm home all right. What about you? I'm not hurt. Doggone, I'm sizzling mad. I turned too sharp, that's what happened. Watch it out smart, huh? Go and reach for your six guns. You're both covered. Hi, women. We call the pole cats outlaws, Mr. Greeley. I smelled them as soon as I saw that tree down across the trail. On your feet, driver. You too, mister. And keep your hands up. You critters have made a mistake. We're not carrying cash or gold. Where's the strong box? We don't have one. I already told you there is no money shipment aboard this stage. You were trying to save something when you drove off the trail. I wanted to save meeting a couple of skunks. Logan, look inside the stage. See if there's any passengers or baggage inside. Right. Spies take their guns. I'll keep them covered. Sure thing, please. I'll take your six-shooter. Make sure you haven't got a sneak gun. I don't carry a sneak gun. Yeah, so I see. All right, Miss Sinar, it's your turn. I'm not armed. Hey, what's this? My wallet. Well, I'll keep it. And likewise, your watch. I suppose it would be useless to protest. It would. There was nothing inside but this satchel. That, that satchel is mine. It contains a few articles of clothing and notes that are of no value to you. Search it for money and jewelry if you wish. We'll take it with us. No, no, don't take my notes. They're worthless to you. Come on, boys, we'll hit the saddle. Uh, Please, I beg you, leave my notes. Don't take them with you. You can't use them. It's no use, Mr. Greeley. Those critters are getting away. My notes? I'm downright sorry this happened. I got orders from the manager of the stage line to see that you reach Mineral Spring safe and sound. That's why I wanted to sidestep those owl hoots. I know you did your best, driver. Oh, they got your baggage, your wallet, your watch. And my notes. They're more important to me than anything else. As Horace Greeley mourned the loss of his notes and the grizzled old driver surveyed the damage to the big Concord stage, 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling at a leisurely pace toward Mineral Springs. Shortly after the robbery, they sighted the overturned stagecoach and the two men standing beside it. Kimasabi, what happened to stage? It's overturned, Toto. Maybe wheel broken. We try to help those men. Montel! When Mr. Greeley and the stagecoach driver heard approaching hoofs, they turned hopefully toward the sound. Hey there! Help! Help! Give us a hand! Great Scott, one of those men is masked, and the other's an Indian. You have all the dratted bad luck. I've had enough today to last for the rest of my life. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Was anyone injured when the stage overturned? The driver and I were the only travelers. Oh, Mr. Greeley. You know me, sir? Of course. I've seen many pictures of you. I heard you were in the West. I journeyed as far as California. Now I'm on my way home. If you and your Indian friend are here to rob us, you arrive too late. We're not here to rob you. You wouldn't be here if I had my six-shooter. The three polecats who beat you two as clean as out. I don't understand. We've been robbed, sir. Oh, tell me about it. Well, see that tree across the trail? Uh, yes. Uh, three outlaws cut it down, figuring to stop the stage. Tried to turn off the trail to avoid stopping by uh, outsmarting myself. Stage over trail. As briefly as possible, the driver and Horace Greeley explained what had happened. When they had finished, the Lone Ranger asked, Would you be able to identify the thieves? Their faces were covered with bandanas. They got away with my gun, Mr. Greeley's watch, wallet and satchel, and likewise some notes he had. Notes that represent weeks and months of work. They're the only record I have of this journey. I had planned to use them as a basis for a series of articles when I reached New York. The loss is irreplaceable. Oh, say, you lied, Mr. Greeley. I don't savvy why you're so broken up about losing some notes. It'll be easy to remember what you wrote. Remembering all of it would be a hopeless task. There were facts and statistics, observations, interviews, and detailed remarks. Without which it would be impossible to do the series I planned. I tried to persuade the thieves to leave my papers, but even though the papers would be worthless to them, they took them. I'll look for the tracks of the men who robbed you. I may be able to trail them and recover your notes. Tonto, you'll be needed here. Uh, me help driver reach the town. Do it easy. Tell you, come up. I'll meet you later at our old campsite near Waxhaw Indian Village. Montel! Touch my notes if you find them. You not worry about papers. If Lone Ranger it... find them, him return them to you. The Lone Ranger? I... I've heard about a man called the Lone Ranger, but I didn't believe he existed. You mean to say the masked man's the Lone Ranger? That's right. Hmm. He did call his horse Silver. Uh, how we fix stage? Well, if you'll give me a hand, I'll show you. Uh, me help. As soon as I remove my coat, I'll help you too. With the tree was working, we'll have the stage ready to travel in short order. It was sundown when the repaired stage moved slowly into the town of Mineral Springs. Meanwhile, in the hills north of town, the three outlaws had stopped to assess the loot of the afternoon's work. Yeah, a watch, a wallet, a bag of outsized clothes, some papers, a six-gun, and $50. About $16 for each of us. Yeah, hardly enough to pay for the risk we took. Blaze, why didn't you tell us there'd be no cash or gold on the stage? I didn't know any more about it than you did. I figured there'd be three or four passengers to rob, as well as a strong box. Instead of that, there was no strong box and only one passenger. That satchel's no good to us. Neither is clothes or papers. I'm beginning to wonder about that, Logan. Huh? What are you talking about, Spice? These cards of identification in his wallet. Take a look at them, please. Uh, the Easterner's named Greeley. Horace Greeley. Uh, hey, I've heard of him. It says in this card that he's the editor of a New York paper. Yeah, the Tribune. These notes are his. Near as I can figure, they tell all about his trip. And that's why he was so anxious to hang on to him. Yeah. He didn't raise any ruckus when we took his watch and his wallet. But he was downright worried about losing these papers. They must be worth a lot to him. In that case, he'd pay a lot to get them back. I figure the same thing, Blaze. Now, put these papers in my saddlebag. We'll find Greeley and tell him if he wants his papers, he can have them for a price. Don't be a jughead. If we go into town with those papers and the law catches us, we'll be jailed for robbing the stage. Do you have a better idea? Yeah. Well, what is it? There's a cave in the hills, not far from the engine's village. Now, you two go there and take the papers with you. What about you? I'll go to Mineral Springs and look for Greeley. When I find him, I'll tell him we have his papers. And we're willing to sell them back to him at the right price. What's to prevent him from having the law follow you when you leave town to meet us in the cave? I'll tell him the papers will be burned if I'm held. Or if a lawman goes near the cave. Hey, I savvy your idea. Logan, you know how to find the cave? Yeah. It's that big opening on the side of Indian Head Mountain. That's it. 
I'll meet you there after I've talked to Greeley. We'll be looking for you. Easy, Steady, Steady there, boy. <coughs> what about Greeley's clothes? Leave them here. They're no good to us. So long, Spice. Easy. Adios, please. I apologize for saying the holdup wasn't worth our trouble. Before we're through with Greeley, we'll have plenty of cash to show for this afternoon's work. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Oh. Get it. The Lone Ranger had trailed the three stage robbers to the place where they had stopped to examine their loot. He picked up the clothing they had discarded and placed it in the satchel he found nearby. <coughs> then he studied the tracks on the soft ground. Two of the outlaws had ridden into the hills, while one man turned in the direction of town. The Lone Ranger decided to follow the solitary rider. Montilla! Darkness was falling when the masked man saw his Indian companion riding toward him. He drew rein. Oh, oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Oh, hello. Did Mr. Greeley reach town safely? Ah. He leave him at hotel. A driver leave town with Sheriff and posse. Take him to see no robbery. Sheriff say him try follow tracks at these. With the darkness coming, he'll not be able to follow them far. Him say him follow tracks by moonlight if him have to. Everyone in town plenty mad. When them find out about robbery. You have trouble trailing outlaws, Kasabi? I'm following one of them now. Oh, what happened to other two? Their trash continued north from the place where they stopped in the hills. It's plenty hard to follow trail in hills. That's why I decided to follow the man who turned toward town. Or perhaps you saw him. Well, the past rider. Maybe him fella you look for. He may be fellow. What did he look like? Well, him tall, thin fella. Him ride big gray horse. Well, uh, here are the tracks of the horse I've been following. Ah, me see him. Ah, tracks the same as gray horse me pass. And he is one of the stage robbers. Not right. Where you find Satchel? In the hills where that rider and his friends stopped. I found Mr. Greeley's clothing there, too. Um, what about papers? I didn't see any papers. Maybe feller who go to town know what happened to him. You go after him. You'll be able to recognize him. Not right. And me think it's safe for you to go to town with mask, Kimasabi. Driver tell sheriff, you lone ranger. <laughs> Who identified me to the driver? Well, me tell him what mask mean. <laughs> I thought so. It will be dark when we reach town. I'll try to avoid being seen. A fellow named Greeley have room on first floor hotel. It's plenty easy for you to reach window hotel without being seen. Good. I'll return his satchel and clothing and tell him we've made some progress. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up, stop. One, two, three. When Spice reached General Springs, he found everyone in town discussing the robbery of the celebrated editor. Man, sure. it's a disgrace when a man like Greeley's robbed. The sheriff had better capture those crooks. He'll be out of a job after election day. Mr. Greeley will go back east and tell what happened to him, and he'll have plenty to say about our community. With his influence, what he says will be published in all the papers around here. Yeah, oh, folks right. in the east will think the west isn't safe. Now, boys, listen, the sheriff's doing his best. He's out looking for those polecats. Hmm. He said he wouldn't come back to town till he found Well, he'd better find him, and when he catches the vomits, we're going to string him up. Yes, Standing on the hotel porch watching the aroused mob, Spice decided he had better move cautiously. After learning where to find Horace Greeley, he waited outside the hotel until darkness was complete and most of the people were in their homes, in restaurants and cafes. When he saw a light appear in the window of the editor's room, he entered the building and went directly to room number four. He knocked on the door. Yes, what is it? Uh, you alone, Mr. Greeley? Yes. Well, then I'll step in. Wait. Who are you? Uh, last time I saw you, I had my face covered. You? Don't call for help. A gun? That's right. I'll use it if I have to. Why did you come here? They offered to return the papers we took from you. My notes? Yeah. Do you have them with you? Oh, I'm not that local, Mr. Greeley. My partners have them. And they're in a cave. They uh, sent me here to say we'll return your papers for $10,000. But that Do is... Do you right? want them or don't you? Well, of course I want them. And you'll recover what? them without paying rent. In the window. Best man. Dr. Gunner, I'll break your arm. Both Spice and Horace Greeley turned in amazement to the open window where they saw the Lone Ranger. The masked man's coat was in his hand and beside him stood Tonto, who also held a gun. When he realized that he was covered by two guns, Spice knew that it would be suicide to try to shoot. All right, I, I dropped my gun. 
Now raise your hands. Me climb in window, Kimasabi. Get gun. Go ahead, Taro. I'll keep him covered from here. As soon as Toto was inside the room, he picked up the outlaw's gun and stood on guard while the Lone Ranger entered. Now, Mr. Greeley, I apologize for my unusual entrance, but this is easier than walking through a crowded lobby. The apologies are unnecessary. I'm glad you and Toto arrived when you did. This man... We overheard his conversation. Then you know he's one of the stage robbers. Yes, we followed him to town. When Toto saw his horse at the hitch rail outside, he became suspicious. He came here to return your satchel and your clothing. But my notes... This man must have been telling the truth when he said his partners are holding them. I was telling the truth, all right. Those notes will be destroyed if anyone tries to go near the cave to get him. Where is the cave? I'm not talking. If we turn this man over to the townspeople, they'll find a way to make him talk. Oh, uh, what do you mean? I heard them talking about the robbery. They want to lynch the thieves. What? Now, ordinarily, I'm opposed to no, violence. No, no, I'm entitled to a fair trial. If the people learn the truth about you, you may not live long enough to go on trial. Yeah, but hangings for murderers and horse thieves. Tell that to the mob. Now, let me out of here. Fire, break and I'll shoot. The sound will bring people to investigate. Yes, that's right. No. The lynch mob has you. You may wish I'd shot to kill. But well, what do you want me to do? Tell us where my notes are. Well, they're in a cave. What cave? Well, it, it's north of here, on the side of Indian Head Mountain. Places about three miles from Waxhaw's engine. As Spice described the huge cave that was surrounded by boulders higher than a six-foot man, the Lone Ranger and Tonto realized that the outlaws had chosen to hide in a place they knew well. Tonto exclaimed, uh, Kimasabi, yes? that cave where we camped many times. Cave not far from Chief Waxaw's Indian village. That's right, Toto. You know the place? Yes, sir. We'll get the sheriff and go there. Now, you can't do that for two reasons. Oh? First, my pals will set fire to those papers as soon as the lawman goes near the cave. In the second place, I know the sheriff's out of town. Yes, he's right. The sheriff is searching for the stage robbers. He vowed he wouldn't return until he captured them. I see. Toto, the jail is next door. Take this man out the rear door of the hotel and through the back entrance to the jail. Ah, uh, me savvy. And that way, no one see him. That's right. If there's a deputy on guard, explain the situation and ask him to hold the prisoner until the sheriff returns. I'll wait here for you. When Tonto returned to the hotel room, he reported that Spice was behind bars and that the deputy on duty had promised to keep the prisoner's identity a secret until the sheriff reached town. I'm glad of that. In spite of my efforts to frighten him, I don't want to see any man lynched. And what we do now, Kimasabi? We go to Indian Head Mountain. To the cave? Yes, but first we'll call on Tonto's friend, Chief Waxhaw. We'll need his help to recover your papers. During the last hour of darkness, Blaze and Logan were waiting anxiously in the mountain cave for Spice to return from town. Neither Blaze nor Logan knew that the Lone Ranger and Tonto were concealed behind trees and boulders some distance from the cave. With them were Chief Waxhaw and two of his braves. The masked man was explaining his plan. Now, Tonto, make your way to those boulders beside the entrance to the cave. Me savvy. Me wait till moon go down. Then move in darkness. Right. Take your position and keep out of sight until both of the men are out of the cave. Me do it. How will we help, masked man? Chief Waxhaw, I'll ride Silver toward the cave. When I'm close to it, I'll drop from the saddle and... You and your braves will ride after me as if you're chasing me. Daylight was breaking when Blaze and Logan heard the sound of approaching hoofs. Logan, listen. Uh, I hear hoofbeats. It must be spice. About time he got here. Get your gun ready, just in case it's someone else. Right. Now, look outside. Yeah, you cover me. Don't worry, I know what to do. Is it spice? No. Then it's the sheriff. Now, I take just... it easy. A masked man. He's traveling fast. You see him yourself in a minute. <laughs> hey, that horse stumbled. The masked man's down. Blaze, listen here. Come more riders. Maybe the sheriff and the posse are chasing that gent. Travel as if the devil were chasing him. We'll watch and see what happens. If anyone starts toward the cave, you know what to do. Right. Keeping well back inside the cave, the two outlaws watched the masked man get to his feet. He appeared to be badly hurt, but he was making an effort to guide his horse from the trail before the approaching riders came into view. When he succeeded in concealing the big white stallion, Blitz and Logan saw him fall, apparently unconscious. Then they saw the pursuing riders. Logan, it's Indian, three of them. They rode right past the masked man, didn't even see him. This man's not moving. He must have been stunned when he fell. Yes, a mighty fine horse. I'd like to own that critter. Come on, Blaze. Let's see if the masked man has any cash on him. 
If he has, we'll take it. From his place of concealment, Toto heard the two men leave the cave. Without making a sound, the Indian stepped into the open with his gun drawn. At the same moment, the Lone Ranger stood up. Logan and Blaze had their weapons ready. You're covered, mister. And you covered. What the... At the sound of Toto's voice, the two outlaws turned their heads. They saw Toto's gun pointing at their backs. The Lone Ranger took advantage of the interruption to draw his Colts. Drop your guns or I'll fire. You two as masked men say. We're in the middle, Blaze. Drop your gun, Logan. Yeah. Keep him covered, Toto. I'll go into the cave and look for Mr. Greeley's notes. Ah, uh, me keep him covered. That masked man's not hurt. We saw his horse throw him. I thought Masked he... man only pretend to be thrown. Him not hurt. Logan, he said he's looking for Greeley's notes. We've been tricked. Oh, 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 oh. Toto, you and masked men catch crooks? That right. Keep wax off. Logan, it's the three Redskins we saw right into the cave. They were chasing the masked men. We figured that he... You figure wrong. Keep hands up. Hey, we heard gunplay. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm Sheriff Bates, Mineral Springs. Get your hands up, mister. Sheriff, this mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. These two are the men you want. They robbed the stage. If you search them, you may find the watch and wallet they stole from Mr. Greeley. Oh, Hank. Hank, uh, search the critters. All right, Sheriff. You find papers from Cave Kimasami? Yes, they're in the saddlebags. Yeah. What papers are you talking about? Horace Greeley's notes. They're in the cave, Sheriff. You know Mr. Greeley? I met him yesterday. Well, then you're the masked man he and the driver were talking about. That's right, Sheriff. Well, in that case, I'll holster my gun. Sheriff, here's Mr. Greeley's watch, and this here's his wallet. Here, put handcuffs on those two critters. We'll take them back to town. All right. Sheriff. Thanks to you, mister, we'll be able to take two prisoners back to town after a nice work trail them. Maybe they'll tell us where to find their partner. Their partner's in jail in Mineral Springs, in Sheriff. Jail. You'll find him when you return to town. Chief Waxball, <laughs> thanks for your help. Me glad to help, friend. Now the crook's caught... We hope Tondo visit our village. Ah, uh, me go back to village with you. Uh, what about you, mister? Well, Sheriff, I'll turn Mr. Greeley's notes over to you. Uh, and you can... Not on your life. You deserve the credit for capturing the polecats and recovering Greeley's watch, his wallet, and those papers. You want to thank you for what you've done. You come with us to town. <laughs> Late that morning, the Lone Ranger, the Sheriff, and his posse reached town with the prisoners. After Blaze and Logan were behind bars, Horace Greeley stood in the Sheriff's office with his wallet, his watch, and his precious notes on the desk in front of him. The editor turned to the masked man and said, Now I'll be able to do the series of articles about my journey, thanks to you, sir. If there's anything I can do to pay you for recovering my notes... I'll look forward to reading your articles, Mr. Greeley. I'm serious about rewarding you. It's reward enough to have been able to serve a man in your position. My position? I, I don't understand. You're in a position to tell the young men and women of America about this great country. The new country beyond the Mississippi. In the West, we need only one thing. What's that, sir? We need men, Mr. Greeley. Men of courage and stout hearts who will come here and settle. Build homes and communities. Brave men... Stout-hearted men. Men like yourself, sir. Adios, Mr. Greeley. Adios, sir, and thank you. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, mister. Thanks. Well, Mr. Greeley, I figured you'd want to thank the masked man for what he did. I do, Sheriff. And now I know how to thank him. Eh? When I return to my desk, I'll give his message to the youth of America. I'll say, go west, young man. Go west. <laughs> 